everyone. Today we will be learning a little bit about how to search effectively on Google. So many of these rules you may have learned on your own while you have been using Google as a trial and error, but this is just a little refresher and just even some tips that you may have not noticed that you can use on Google to actually help you find things much quicker and actually find the correct result you are looking for. Because Google is such a large engine, there's so many resources on there. So hopefully this will help you find things much better. Okay. So let's go through the steps on how to search effectively on Google. The most important thing is our search strategies. So when we are searching on Google, we have to remember that this is a huge engine and a very smart um, internet engine that is going to recognize your search results and all the time when you enter something in. But you don't have to be too complicated when you are searching on Google. And a key feature is you just have to keep it simple. You will get relevant results when you keep it short. So for example, if you're asking for the weather, you can just say weather Bronx, New York, and it will give you the quickest results when you search it much shorter. If you say something longer, like what is the weather today in my neighborhood, it's a little bit too long and you don't have to type that much. Consider suggestions. So later on, I'm going to be showing uh, myself navigating on Google and you will see what I mean by suggestions. But when you start typing on Google, they will recommend, Google will recommend you suggestions with the most search, search results involving the topic that you enter. So if you're asking Google about medical help or technology help, or even just a trending topic in the news, it's going to give you um, suggestions of what, they, what Google thinks you may be um, looking for. Also use natural language. So search engines can recognize the language you naturally use in your everyday life. So you do not need to make um, your sentences complicated or um, it doesn't have to be difficult at all. You can talk like how you would talk to a family member or a friend. And most importantly, we have to watch out for spelling mistakes because once we do have a spelling mistake on Google, that might change all of our search results. Okay, let us go on to the next topic. And this is our search results. So when we do enter something on Google, we're going to see many things on our screen, such as advertisements, maybe even a map, if we're searching a business, and we can see that the advertisements are at the top of our screen where it says add in green. And we can also see another advertisement on the right hand side. So if I give it two circles here and I'll give this a circle over here, those are advertisements. Advertisements are, you know, paid advert paid by different companies when you search on Google, but just because it is an advertisement doesn't mean it's the best or reliable source. So just watch out for paid advertisements. So like I was saying, Google search results may include paid advertisements. They'll always appear at the top or at the sides of the search result page. And it won't, it won't exactly always be the most reliable resource. Sometimes they can be very helpful, but, um, but you know, to hit or miss, sometimes they are, sometimes they aren't. So when you do search on Google, for example, locations, whether that's a business location, a company, a product, 
Google may present you with a map and other businesses related to your search results. So let's say you're searching for the nearest um, shopping center near you, even a clothing store, a phone store, technology, any of that, any business, even um, going to the doctor, Google may present you with a map so, they'll, so they can actually give you the directions to the place. And it's always going to appear either at the top of the screen or under the advertisements. But if you do want the best results when you are searching for a business or a company or product, make sure you always include the word near me. Because when you do include the word near me, Google's going to find the closest places in your area. So if you want to just make it very specific and you don't want it to be too broad where it only shows you new um, locations in your city, but you actually want locations just in your neighborhood, you want to put the word near me. So here I have um, a search result when we put in our center, Riverdale Senior Services. And you can see if we look at the screen and on the right hand side, you can see it's actually giving us all the information about our business. So you can see it has the photos, it even has a map location of where we're located. We could click on that and it'll take us to a map with directions. We, if we keep reading at the bottom, it says our address, and hours, and even our phone number. So next time when you are searching for a business and you and you want to know this type of information like the address and the phone number, always look at the right hand side of your screen to see if they give you um, a sort of a menu that shows the information very quickly. So it's like a more of a shortcut instead of going on a website and trying to find the information of when this business is open or closing, what's their phone number. Sometimes they will have all of that laid out for you in the front and center on Google. So here I have another example where I used Target. And you can see that when I searched for just the word Target locations, it's giving me locations obviously in the city, but it's actually giving me locations based on how close they are to me with the letters A, B, and C. So A is going to have the closest target near me, while C is going to have the one farthest from me. So depending on where you live and the type of clothing store you put in, business doesn't matter, it will give you the closest ones to you and the farthest ones to you. Another thing on Google is searching for a specific type of content. So yes, we want to search for a, um, a question that we want an answer to, a business, uh, directions to a place, but Sometimes Google gives us millions and millions of results, and we kind of just want to refine that and just find the one thing that we are really looking for. So what we're going to actually focus on, and I'm going to actually share my screen and show you all, is how this Google menu bar works and how important it is to actually use it when you are searching for something. Because... If we look here at the screen right now, and we just typed in the word dog, you can see it's just giving us top story news about the dog. However, in the red circle is our menu. And this is how we can narrow it down. If I'm looking for images of dogs, the recent news, videos, if I want to see um, where they are adopting dogs in my neighborhood. And even you can even search more about dogs as well. So I'm going to go over this menu bar with different topics to show you how we can actually change our search results and make them more specific. 
so we are here in Google and actually we are going to search for something recently that happened, which was Queen Elizabeth's, um, she sadly passed away, but we're going to use Queen, use uh, Queen Elizabeth as a topic to search for today on Google because since there has been so much news on her, I will show you all how to actually refine your search to find exactly what you are looking for. So I'm going to search up Queen Elizabeth. And if we look here on the screen, you can see there's many um, different things that are happening. We have a website of information about her. We have on the right hand side more information about her. We have top stories. And if we scroll down, there would be many more things related um, on Queen Elizabeth II. But we're actually, if we look here at the top of the screen, I'm going to circle it in red. You can see that over 1 billion, re Google gave me over 1 billion results about Queen Elizabeth. And I actually do not, do not need a billion results about Queen Elizabeth. That's a little bit too much. So a great thing about this is, let's just bring this back. We can actually not have a billion results and look and search for exactly what we are looking for once again, using our menu bar at the top of the screen where it says all news, images, books, videos, and more. So let's say I actually just wanted to see the most recent news pertaining to Queen Elizabeth. Instead of just searching for her and scrolling down and looking at these different articles, what I actually can do is hit the word news at the top of my screen. So if I click on news, you can actually see that now we went from 1 billion results to now 130 million. So we're getting somewhere, the results are actually going down and that's what we want. So if we want to refine our search, what we're going to do is want to click on the word tools. So if I circle the word tools in red, you can see that's what we, we want to click on. And when we click on the word tools, you can see a new menu has appeared once I clicked on it. The word recent and sorted by relevance. That is how we're going to even refine our search more because when we click on these two options that are circled in red, we can actually find news articles about Queen Elizabeth from an hour ago, 24 hours ago, or just news from last week, even past year. So let's say um, you wanted to know the news stories that happened um, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, last year. This is a great feature that you should try out because the range goes on forever. So we can even click on custom date range and we can select years from way back as well. So I'm going to click on recent and I'm actually going to just click on past hour because if we look at the screen right now, Let's just, if we look at the screen right now, we can see that each of these articles are from different hours ago. Six hours ago, four hours ago, a day ago, two days ago. There's, they're all um, mixed together, the dates. However, if I clicked on recent and changed it to past hour, now you can see it's actually showing me articles from anything that happened in the last hour. And you can see that because under each of these articles, there's different um, minutes ago. So the first one says 20 minutes ago, 12 minutes ago, 10 minutes ago, 45 minutes ago. 
So this is a great way to search up news articles or even any topic that you are looking for, whether that is um, you just want um, medical information, technology information about anything that may interest you, doesn't matter. If you want the recent articles about that, you want to make sure to use tools and change it to what exactly you're looking for. So whether you want something from an hour ago, 24 hours ago, and, and even years ago, tools is what you need to use. And you can even see that because I changed it to one hour ago, we started from a billion, then we went to 300 million, and now, I have exactly what I'm looking for, which is only 3,000 results. So that's a huge difference from a billion results of when we started. So this is just a great tool and trick to use when you are searching on Google to actually find that search result. Now, another thing that we can also do on Google using this menu bar is it's a great way to compare different prices and look at reviews and things like that if you are someone who shops online or anything like that so let's say we went back to google and you're someone who shops online and you're looking for an item but you don't know where to start or which website to actually purchase from. So we're going to use an example of a folding chair. So if I typed in the word folding chair and I searched for it, you can see once again, I have um, 146 million results and I scroll down and these are all the chairs um, on, from different websites, chairs that are in different stores near me. But if we go back at the top of our screen where our menu is, you can see that now we have a section called shopping. And this shopping tab is actually very important to help us re refine our search. This is going to help us find exactly what we are looking for this works on any item, piece of furniture, even clothes. So we're going to hit on shopping. And you can see now we have all these different types of chairs on sale on different websites. But what the great thing about this, if we look on the left hand side, this is where we can actually change and filter our folding chairs. So filter just means we are going to find exactly what we are looking for. So obviously there's millions and millions of folding chairs, but we can actually change the price by filtering it. We can say we only want um, a specific type of color chair, a specific um, color made out of a, the material, the weight, the brand, it goes on. And that's on the left-hand side of the screen. So I'll show you, it's here. These is what I'm saying by filtering. So I'll show you how it works. If we click on up to $45, it's only gonna show me chairs that are up to $45. So now you can see when we're looking at the chairs here, at the, you can see they're all prices that should be only $45 and under. And if we change the color to black, you can see now it should only show me chairs that are black. I don't know, this one kind of slipped through because this is a two pack piece. So this one is, has a white chair and a black chair, but the rest should be just black chairs. This is also a two pack. So the, the, those filters on the left hand side are a really great way to just um, refine your searches to find exactly what you are looking for. And like I said, it doesn't just work for furniture. 
It works for clothes as well. So if we just wanted to search for jeans, the same rules are going to apply. It's gonna show us all these different types of jeans and we can change the prices, the color of the jeans, the brand, the department. It's just a great way to always compare your prices, a tool to compare prices. And this is going to work for anything, clothing, um, technology um, devices, even airplane tickets. This is a great way to just see what one price is on one website and what it is on another website. So once again, these are the tools to look for when you are searching on Google. Um, lastly, what I'm just going to show you is uh, the weather that I talked about earlier. So you don't have to always put on Google, what is the weather in my neighborhood? You don't have to put a long sentence. You can just use, keep it simple and use just keywords. So you can just put weather and then Bronx, You can see right here, just by putting weather in the Bronx, you can see it's giving me the different temperature and this is an interactive map. So once you click on it, it will change accordingly to the different times. So you can see it's 79 degrees at two o'clock, but if we clicked all the way at the ending of this um, interactive weather map, it's already the next day at 11 a.m. And you can change it by temperature, precipitation, and the wind. So instead of um, typing next time, what is the weather in the Bronx? You can just say weather Bronx and it'll give you the same result. Just make sure to keep it simple. And these results should work uh, on anything that you type on Google because they recognize your language very easily. So thank you all. And that is how to search effectively using Google.